Love this. Oh. How's that bus treating you, ma'am? Are you driving the struggle bus today? I was very fortunate. I got to go on the Oprah Winfrey Show, which is a fantastic experience. And about six months after they aired my episode, they re-aired the episode during the season's off-season, like during the off-season, you know. And one of my friends calls me on the phone and just goes, hey, did you know you're on the Oprah Winfrey Show? <laughs> but of course, I was like, I lost? He's like, yeah, she interviewed you on everything. <laughs> I was like, you're a dumbass. <laughs> but then I couldn't say anything because not too long after that I had my own struggle bus day. I was home for a few days. I live in Cleveland, Ohio. I was home for a few days and I had to go to the grocery store. Now, there are two types of people when it comes to doing their grocery shopping, okay? Or any shopping for that matter. They are smart, intelligent shoppers who make a list of the things they need. They go to the store, they buy those items, and then they go home. And then there are people like me who go with a mental list of the things that I need and come out like five hours and fifteen thousand dollars worth of shit later. Um, especially if you're like Walmart or Target because you're like, ooh, look, a snuggie. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you want the insight as a deterioration of our society, you have to look no farther than the snuggie. <laughs> Not that the snuggie is so popular. I'm okay with that. Not even that the snuggie is so popular that you can now buy snuggies for your dogs. I'm okay with that. But the fact that the Snuggie is so popular that there are companies making knockoff versions of the Snuggie. You can buy an item called the Slanket. <laughs> it sounds like a disease. <laughs> so what'd you get for your birthday? I got a Slanket. <laughs> they have cream for that? <laughs> So anyway, so I go to the grocery store one day, I get all my stuff, I get in my car, I go back to my house, I get out of my car, I go inside, I start putting everything away, I end up putting everything away, I realize that I forgot to get an item that I needed to have that day. Not a big deal. So I hop back in the car, drive back to the store, hop out of my car, go to walk inside, and as I'm on my way into the store, I get a phone call, my cell phone, from a friend of mine that I hadn't talked to in a really long time. I was kind of anxious to catch up. So I start talking on the phone to my friend, I'm walking through the store. And as I'm walking and talking, I begin to see several other items that I had forgotten to get earlier too. So I'm talking on the phone, I'm grabbing all these items. I check out, still talking, walk to my car, still talking, drive home, still talking, to my house, still talking, what side, still talking, finally hang up the phone, start putting everything away, and then I realize I forgot the item, I actually went back to get originally. So now I'm like, ha ha ha, I'm a dumbass, I get back in my car, I drive back to the store, I run inside, grab that item, check out, and I proceed to walk to my car. And as I'm walking to my car, I have my car keys in my hand, okay? I have a lot of nervous energy, if you couldn't tell. And if I have a set of keys in my hand, I cannot just walk and hold on to those keys. I have to play with them somehow, okay? Whether it's just tossing them up in the air, some people whip them around like they're gunslingers, <laughs> some people carry them on shoestrings or lanyards so they can throw with people to pull back real fast. Watch them. <laughs> <laughs> so this particular day, I was taking my keys walking, tossing them behind my back and catching them all in one fluid motion, all right? I don't know why, don't ask. And at one point, I throw the keys too far, and I have to lunge to catch my keys. Now, I literally catch my keys right here, okay? Now, I have a giant key on my key ring that has all the buttons for the doors, and it hits just right that that key swings around in an arc and pokes me in the eye. <laughs> now, it didn't really hurt. It just kind of startled me a little bit. So I just kind of go like this, and my contact pops out. <laughs> now, at the time, I was blind without my contacts, okay? And I really didn't feel like driving home with only one eye. So I quickly assess the situation and figure that the best thing to do would be to find my contact, throw it back in my eye, get in my car, race home to my house, and take care of my contact. Sounds like a genius plan. So I put the bag down, I get down on the ground, I start looking for my contact. Now mind you, people are walking in and out of the store still. Nobody stops to help. Everyone just walks by and thinks, <laughs> sucks to be you. <laughs> So I find it by my contact, throw it back in my eye, get in my car, race home to my house, run upstairs to my bathroom, start taking care of my contact. And as I'm taking care of my contact, it slowly starts to dawn on me that I'm in a bag with the items laying on the parking lot floor. So let's recap real quick. Four trips to the grocery store for one item. Folks, I wasn't riding the struggle bus that day. I was chasing it down the road to get a hot and sit up. Wait for me! Oh, oh look, ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> 
And y'all think I catch up pretty stupid? Because honestly, I did too. <laughs> 24 hours max before you're going to freak somebody out. Because you're going to go home tomorrow, lunch tomorrow afternoon at work, at school, wherever you might be with some people who weren't here. Someone's going to pull out some ketchup and you're just going to go. <laughs> They're like, you're weird. I'm going to ketchup. Come on. <laughs> I just struggle with once in a while, it's part of life, but what's really kind of sad to see, what's really kind of hard to grasp right now, is the number of people who are struggling with life every single day. Right now in our country, one in five people over the age of 18 is prescribed an antidepressant drug. One in five people <coughs> believes, for some reason or another, they need some medicinal help, some medicine, just to let them get themselves through the day. And it's estimated as high as 40 to 45 percent of all children under the age of 18 could be clinically diagnosed as depressed. For some reason, one way or the other, we are struggling just to get by every single day. And I think the largest reason that we struggle as individuals is we have lost the ability to accept and understand and see life for what it is. We get into our mindsets the idea of the way we think life should be, the way we want life to be, the way we believe life should be, but very rarely can we look at, understand, and accept the way life actually is. And it's our ability to perceive life as it is that allows us to focus in on the things that really truly make a difference in our own life. And I think one of the